It's getting darker, Kenny. Not the sun going down, but in our hearts. We know. Well, I know that. Oh, you're not angry with me, are you? Angry? How could I be angry with you, Kenny? We're alone. Kenny. Life, how can I bear it? How good is your memory, sir? <laughs> well taken, Jane. And I've not been good entirely. Do you know why Adele is here? No, sir. She's supposed to be my child. Mighty Caesar. Dost thou lie so low? Art thou thy conquests, glories, triumphs, spoils, shrunk to this little measure? Fare thee well. I know not, gentlemen, what you intend. Who else must be let blood? Who else is rank? If I myself, there is no hour so fit as Caesar's death hour, nor no instrument of half that worth as those your swords made rich for the most noble blood of all this earth. I do beseech ye, if you bear me hard, now was your purpled hands to reek and smoke, fulfill your pleasure. Live a thousand years, I shall not find myself so apt to die. No place shall please me so. No mean of death is here by Caesar, and by you cut off the choice. so far. But even if I had, I don't see what business it is of yours. Oh, would you mind getting out? Look, Phil, you're throwing away everything on something. I don't think would you... Would you mind going? There's enough discord and dissidents in the streets of Boston. We don't have to track it into our home. Short of the Advocate General of the Province marching about town, I had stuff full of these wild, rebellious ideas. Well, what would you have me do, Ruth? Well, speak to your sister. <laughs> my sister's opinions, like the movements of the heavenly bodies, are things beyond my power to control. <laughs> A bit married. Katie, we Look, oh, Sam Adams. Good evening, James. I hope we're not disturbing oh, you. Not at all. Come in. How are you, John? Passably well. Ruth, you remember John Emery? Uh, my daughter's, sir. Uh, and Sam, you. of course. Good evening, Adam. Ruth. Come along, Elizabeth. I'm very tired. We have intruded, James. Oh, nonsense. Nonsense. Now, business is urgent. Well, uh, come into my study. Mary, will you fetch up some wine? Yes, sir. Well, gentlemen, how can I serve you? You can call out your dogs. My dog? Robinson and that gang of thugs he calls his deputies. Oh, what has happened? They practically tore John's house apart this evening. What are you doing? I'm leaving. You're leaving? I couldn't sleep last night. 
After you left, I kept thinking about what you said and what's been happening to you here in this beauty parlor. This is what you want. You must have misunderstood me. I don't think I did. That's why I'm quitting. Well, perhaps a raise in salary will help you change your mind. You think money is the answer to everything. Money has nothing to do with it. Have you got a job? No. Where are you going? I thought I'd speak to Dr. Crowley first. Perhaps he can find an opening for me somewhere in his office. Crowley's office? I thought you were too smart to fall for that horse and buggy routine. Don't you know why men like Crowley fall for it? Because they're scared of the competition. So they dig a hole in the ground, place to hide, and call it a small town. Why? Because they think in a small town they'll be needed, more than they are here in a big city. It's true, he is needed more in Colville. Only in Crowley's imagination, in yours. Small towns are just like big ones, except in one way. They have less of everything. They have enough for me. Go ahead, Colonel. Well, I'd say it was now or never. As far as the Russians are concerned, never comes on the day we've perfected the ICBM. Colonel? That's the Intercontinental Ballistics Missile. Travels 8,000 miles an hour, has a range of 5,000 miles with a thermonuclear mm -hmm. warhead. Its aim can be preset like that of a cannon. Well, the figures are right here. Lose it, and I know right where it's buried. Well, I'm sorry I keep saying all the wrong things. I, I don't mean to, really. You take things so... Oh. So sensitively, you make it very difficult for someone to talk to. I used to think that about you, too. I used to wonder what you were like without that pencil and pad. I had in mind to ask you for some time. When six o'clock comes around, what do they do? Unplug you and stick you away in a closet? Is that how I strike you? silver while I lay ill, and I swear it cured me. I'm touched to think that I've been the means of your recovery, my lord. You should have heard the compliments I've heard paid you. The world has been outdone, they said. The moon out moon. You needn't trouble to repeat them. Now, the queen herself has admired it, the design, the workmanship. This is what we've needed, I said to myself. More silver everywhere, oceans of silver. So Walter has set the style the world will follow. <laughs> well, that I'm not. When last we met, it was, as I remember, ill met by moonlight, sir. Well met by day, my queen. But hardly hope to see you again, my lord of Essex, after what was vowed forever when you left. You were unkind to remind me. I think I also used the word forever and meant it as much, at least. Therefore, no apology. Only... Morning, ain't you, Now we're 
you have to take them as they come. 